All right, so today we're going to learn about gravimetric analysis. So gravimetric analysis is basically a quantitative separation technique that's going to allow us to separate a precipitate or a solid um, that's formed in solution um, from the aqueous solution, the part that's still dissolved. So the word gravimetric is telling us that the filtering is occurring through the force of gravity pulling the filtrate or the solution through the filter paper and it's going to leave behind our solid or our precipitate. So that probably all sounds like a bunch of really fancy words, but don't let it all intimidate you. Okay, so what we have here um, at the top up here is we have, um, we have the lead nitrate solid, okay, so that's just like a salt, an ionic compound, and we're going to throw it into some water, and it's going to become aqueous, which means it's going to separate, like it does down here, into its component ions, so the ions that make up lead to nitrate, okay? So that's step one. So we've got our salt, and then we're putting it in solution, and then you see that all the little parts break up here. So that's step one. Okay, step two is we are going to add um, another substance that contains the sulfate ion, in this case, sodium sulfate right here. This has also been dissolved in solution. So you've got your lead nitrate that's in solution and your sodium sulfate that's in solution. All right, so they are going to react and they're gonna produce lead to sulfate and sodium nitrate. Now notice that the lead to sulfate over here has a little S beside it, meaning it's a solid. It's gonna form a precipitate. And then the sodium sulf uh, nitrate over here, it's aqueous, which means it's still dissolved, it's still broken up in solution. So down here, the part that's still in solution, that's this aqueous part. And then the solid, that's the stuff that has collected at the bottom. So what we can do is we can actually separate these two now that they're in different states of matter to determine um, some cool stuff about them, okay? All right, so this is where we are going to um, do this filtering process. So this is actually, this right here, this setup, this is actually your gravimetric filtration, your gravimetric analysis, okay? So what you have up here is you have a funnel, and you put a uh, funnel paper inside of your funnel, and you're going to pour this whole solution into there, not letting it get above your filter paper, and um, it's going to filter down, and what's still dissolved, so that sodium nitrate is going to end up down here, and then your solid, your precipitate, your lead sulfate, it's going to end up up here. So you can actually determine the mass of this solid after the filter paper has dried out, which allows you to do some calculations on purity or empirical formula or things like that. Okay, so a little bit more info about gravimetric analysis, maybe now that you can picture a little bit better what it is. Um, but basically, it allows us to determine the amount of um, something that we have through the grams, through the mass. It can help us determine, determine percent comp composition, um, the empirical formula, so like purity, things like that. Um, you can do it through dehydration of a hydrate. You can do it through formation of a precipitate, which is what I just showed you guys. So you isolate that and you mass it. Um, when you're doing your analysis, you got to remember, always go to moles because moles is that central unit that allows you to go from one substance to another. And you're going to use those mole ratios to go between two substances in a balanced equation. All right, so here is a sample problem. So in the sample problem, um, a student is given 2.49 grams of a mixture containing anhydrous magnesium chloride and potassium nitrate. Um, they want to determine the percentage by mass of the magnesium chloride in the mixture. So what happens is the student adds AgNO2, so silver nitrite, um, 
to precipitate out the chloride ion. So they add this to this mixture, and what they end up with is some AGL solid that they're then able to precipitate out and collect through the filter paper through gravimetric analysis. They collect 5.48 grams of it, so on the basis of this information, they want us to try to determine the number of moles of MgCl2 that were in the original mixture. Okay, so to do this, first thing you need to be thinking about is you need to be thinking about a balanced equation here. Okay, so what's the actual process we have going on here? So what we have is we have this um, MgCl2, and we're adding it to the silver nitrite, all right, and then that is making the silver chloride, and then, of course, you're also going to have some other stuff, which is going to be your um, magnesium and your nitrite there, so if we really wanted to finish this out, we'd have our nitrite over here, of course, I just ran out of room, should be a two charge on the outside of that, and then if you balanced your equation, you would have, let's see, a 2 here and a 2 here. Okay, so this is important because it helps us go from one substance to another. So we know that we had isolated 5.48 grams of the AgCl. Okay, so I'm going to write that down here. So I had... Um, 5.48 grams of my AgCl, and I want to figure out how many moles of MgCl2 I had. So to go from MgCl or AgCl to MgCl2, I've got to go from uh, grams to moles, right? But I've got to go through my balanced equation from my AgCl to my MgCl2 over here, okay? So first off, I'm going to need the molar mass of my AgCl. So let's go calculate that real quick. So my molar mass of AgCl is 143.32 grams, and that's going to give us one mole of AgCl. Okay, now we need to go from AgCl to MgCl2, so that's in your balanced equation. You're looking at your ratios, so you got two moles of your AgCl for every one mole of your MgCl2. Okay, so now we've made it all the way through if we cancel our units, and we are two moles of MgCl2. So our answer is point, that's a decimal, point zero one nine moles. Okay, so that's how much MgCl2 we had. Okay, so that's how much was in the original mixture. Now the next question is related to that, and it's wanting the percent by mass of MgCl2 in the mixture. Okay, so keyword here, percent by mass. So I need to take my moles of MgCl2 and I need to turn it into grams. So that's the step, first step you got to do to determine percent by mass. Okay, so over 1. And then we've got... Okay, so we're going to set up our conversion over here. So we'll have mole on bottom this time. And then we want the molar mass of MgCl on top. So if you calculate that out, it's 95.2 grams. And then we multiply to get our answer of 1.81 grams. So that's how much magnesium chloride was in there. Now remember, if you go back to the problem, that was the total, the 2.94 grams. So to get percent by mass, we'll do our part, that was MgCl2, over our total, which was 2.94 grams, times 100, and that tells us the percentage of that that was um, just the magnesium chloride. So when I work out that math, I get that it was 61.5%
magnesium chloride by mass. So that's how gravimetric analysis can help us. So in that example, it helped us determine the purity. So the purity of our sample was we had 61.5% of it was magnesium chloride. Okay, so having some errors um, within your experiment can affect what you determine um, and, and what your calculations end up being. So we're just going to talk a little bit about what those errors can be and how they can affect it. So if you have contamination in your solid, meaning you have stuff in there that shouldn't be in there, you're going to get a mass that is too large for your precipitate. So you're going to think you have more of it than you actually do have in reality. So that's going to make you think you have like a higher percent purity, or it's going to throw off your um, empirical formula calculation, but it's going to make you think you have more than you're supposed to. All right, incomplete precipitation means that you didn't let all the solid that's supposed to form form. So in other words, the, the reaction didn't complete itself. So because it didn't complete itself, you lost some of it before it reacted, and it went into the bottom of the flask there. It made it through the filter paper. So in that case, you're thinking that um, you're getting a mass that is too small, meaning that your percentage is lower than it's supposed to be. Okay, and then if you have a solid that wasn't fully dehydrated, what that means is that in your filter paper, you didn't let your filter paper completely dry out. So it's still got some leftover water in there. Um, and so it's going to make you think that you have more solid than you actually do. So it's going to make your mass too large. So your percent of what you think you got is going to be higher than it actually is.